This is the cabinet that I have my eight and a half by 11 paper in. I bought this cabinet at Menards. And Shorty's right now trying to eat my microphone. Down on the shelf is my hammer mill cardstock. So all of this shelf right here is dedicated to eight and a half by 11 cardstock. All of this is going to change. If you look closely in this cabinet, look at how much wasted space there is right here. I totally want to fix this and make this all more usable. A lot of this is just wasted space. On this side, I've got 12 by 12. I have my scrap paper over here in folders. These are my new paper shelves that I got to put inside my cabinet. These will actually hold eight and a half by 11 sheets of cardstock. So this is going to be perfect, but wait till you see, because I'm going to take this one step further when I organize this and it's going to be amazing. Butters and Shorty, they love to be on film. One of their little mouse toys. This is the tab punch that I used to create the separators for my paper storage. And I wanted to show you exactly how I created those separators. I like to make my tabs out of sticker paper. And the sticker paper that I'm going to be using is the Astro Designs. It's a matte white sticker paper. I'm bringing in my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer and I'm going to score the sticker paper at one and a half inches going to cut at three inches. You should have your sticker paper scored and you can fold it just like that. When working with this punch, I like to open up the bottom so I can see everything down here. When you insert it, you want the fold line on top. By the time you place it inside the punch, you can see that our top fold when we punch it is not going to cut and that's exactly what we want. Hold it in there and gently squeeze and out pops this adorable little sticker tab. Now that we have our tabs created, I like to use the Crafter's Companion white stamping card to make my separators for my paper. Our paper is eight and a half by 11. This is actually 11 and three quarters inches long. So it's longer than our paper. Peel off the backing, stick it right under there like so, push down, fold it over, and then you've got this wonderful separator for your paper. Depending upon what the type of card stock it is or what type of paper, I like to take the company packaging for whatever paper that I'm using it for, just cut it down to size a little bit and stick that paper right down to your tab and then that way you know what paper you need to repurchase when you run out of that. Using the P-Touch Embellish Label Maker. It might be hard to see but I have printer paper written on here and it's in the small font. All you have to do is hit print. It tells you one copy. You just choose how many copies you want printed. I just want one so I hit print again. Just print it right out of the side of the machine and this is your cutter. All you gotta do is just press on that and it releases it, cuts it just real nice. And all I have to do is just trim this down to size. It will fit perfectly on my little tab. This is now what my cabinet storage for all my paper looks like. I'm absolutely so happy and so thrilled with this. Both of those shelves right there gave me so much more space to store paper and it just works beautiful for eight and a half by 11 paper. I'm going to show you up close what it looks like the tabs that I've got in here. It's separating all of my different foil card stocks right there by colors and going down the different white card stocks that I have. I have Crafter's Companion, Hammer Mill card stock, Nina card stock. So all of these white card stocks have their labels on them and it's wonderful storage and I'm so happy how this turned out and I have 12 by 12 pattern papers over here in one of those side folder things same thing down here to take up that extra space I have pattern papers that are just 12 by 12 I have more 12 by 12 and this is more card stock but over here I have my scraps 
in different 12 by 12 folders, just like pockets, see? Tags to put on the side of those, and it says what colors are actually in those folders. Now, if you have more scraps than me, you might need a couple folders per color. However you need to do this, but you can literally take the whole folder out and take it to your desk and work and then put it right back. So it makes for some really, really nice storage and you can tell what you have. I don't have anything above this area because I need to be able to open up this bin. I have all of my embossing folders stored in this cute little pullout bin. And then over here, I have an art bin. And when I open this up, I have pre-cut layers for cards. In the back, I have Tim Holtz Biggs dies. The price on each of the paper units were so good. I shopped around for the best price. I absolutely love this paper storage. It gives me 11 different spaces in each one of these shelves. Plenty of space to store paper. It maximizes my storage. And adding the tabs, anybody that watches my channel, you know I love to label tabs and put them on everything. I can find stuff so much faster. Let me know in the comments below if you love storing your paper horizontally or vertically. I also wanted to share my foil storage because since my last video, I always move stuff around. If you ever find yourself in a creative rut or you just don't feel as creative, try reorganizing your stuff because I'm telling you, it will help you so much be able to find your things quicker. I pull this out. I have my Heidi Swap foils, a couple different foils, transfer medium, Cricut foils, range foils in here so a lot of different foils in this little bin I can easily pack this to my desk whenever I decide that I want to foil and then I just bring it back over and slide it right back into place Shorty is not making this easy for me she keeps blocking everything in view that I want to show you little bin that I got from Lowe's. I have everything from my glimmer machine. All of my glimmer hot foils are here. I've got a couple that came with the machine down here. And then I have my hot foil plates and dies all up in this little basket right here. I would like to eventually put these into sleeves so I can leaf through them easier, but I haven't got to that point yet. It's coming, but I haven't got there yet. So when I'm done with this at my desk, I can easily just come back over and put it away. This is the Mimo Caddy by Molly Ollie. And you can see I have a lot of inking stuff in here. So all of my stamping storage, I have converted into this little convenient caddy. You can see I have brushes stored in the side and there's a lot of pockets on this thing. I have my stamp chamois here, and this is pretty heavy. I have a lot of stuff in here, but it's so portable, so when I'm finished stamping, I can move it back onto my shelf. It's so convenient. I have some of my little brush dauber things in here, and my pusher thing. But if I hold this up right here, you can see how many Gina K inks I fit in here. And they're all stored in Tim Holtz storage Distress Tins. And I just took the lids off of the Distress Tins and then the inks can easily fit down inside of there. Perfect storage, that's a lot of ink, but it's so portable and I love it. So when I'm done, back on my shelf, easy cleanup. So I'm working on my ink storage right now and I am labeling everything so that I can tell what the colors are. These are old labels and I'm going to strip those off and make new labels. So this is just sticker paper and on the sticker paper I just ink it up to the color that that is the ink pad and then I use my label maker to actually put words on the ink pads. Main things you need to know about if you're going to store your inks like this. One, make sure it's close to your workspace so that you're not having to travel very far to get your inks or you may find yourself not using your inks at all. Two, 
I recommend if you have anything like the Distress inks, make sure you color code and label them with a name so you know what those colors are and I guarantee you will be using your inks a lot more. So that's it for today's video and this is Little Butters saying goodbye. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and leave me a comment below. And until next time, I will see you in that next video. Bye!